Hi gang, Dan here from Marginally Clever. I have a little bit of a sore throat and I have a very loud keyboard for which I apologize in advance. Now, I'm, I'm not comfortable self-promoting very much, so I'm gonna do my best here and I thank you for your encouragement and kind words. Uh, I write a lot of code, in, mostly in Java, and I hope that my work helps other people do their thing, but they can't, I can't help them if they don't know about it. So I'm, I'm forced to make YouTube videos to talk about what I'm doing. Um, this project began as an app to convert art, to make art for a plotter. And a plotter is a robot that draws pictures. So this is a simulation of the robot with a piece of paper. And it has lots of ways in it of doing things like uh, making mazes or filling a paper, or, uh, all, all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and I noticed after a while, after building enough pieces, uh, that a lot of code started to repeat. Um, but, but, for example, if I open a file here, this gives you a great preview. Okay, that's cool and all. Um, but then if I do another one that also does four color stuff, um, it, it's doing most of the work for you and giving you only a couple of options. And all three of these are reusing the same sort of color code. And this one is also doing some, some color stuff in there, right? Um, a weird, weird stuff, but repeating under the hood. And what I want is to make Lego blocks that you can put together to, to do your own thing. You don't have to be an, a programmer. There should be a, a no code, low code, a flow based programming. And that's the keyword that I hit on that led me to this next step. So this tab here is called Donatello. Um, these can be, you know, moved around. Um, the, the, this whole part is a separate project that you can bring into your Java thing and then just use it. So you don't have to build all of this junk up here, right? Um, and, and I've got, I've, wah, thanks Windows. I've got it where you can do something like this or you can do something like this. And then you can print your turtle. And when you connect these together, you get you get some cool stuff happening. Let's put that, make that more fuller screen. Okay, so this is an, a waveform of an audio file that I, I got from here. Um, now, of course, this is a bitmap. This is a you know like a photograph, and this one is a set of line instructions. Turtle ref is re a reference to the Commodore 64. There was a program when I was like eight years old in 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 the 1900s when uh, you would tell the little turtle to turn left, turn right, put its tail down, change the color. And if you give it enough instructions, it would draw a picture. So this is th how the lines are described in here. And who doesn't like turtles, right? It's, it's turtles all the way down. Um, so let's try instead here. Let's try um, some other stuff to show more of what this can do. Because yeah, I, am, I am rambling quite a lot here. Let's say this is going to be 420 wide and this is 583 tall. So there's a canvas that's the same size as an A2 piece of paper. Um, now our, this, let's disconnect this. In fact, let's delete this. Okay, so we've got a canvas and we've got a picture and we've got i guess we got an audio file there but i don't really want this audio file instead i want to change this to a spiral okay and let's try printing that again this is the the same thing as you see on the right here but this one's dockable you can link it and all that stuff um that's the audio file from before i wanted this Well, that's disappointing. Let's try this again. I will grab my spiral to corners and and do like this. There we go. Uh, I'll have to look into that later. You know how it is when you're writing code, there's, there's always something. 
Okay, so this turtle is not showing up on the canvas yet, but we're gonna, that's the next step. I will take a transform and with a transform, uh, boop, I can now move it around. So let's try 210 would be half. And I think it's perfect. Okay, so now it's on the paper where I want it to be. Let's try merging the image and the line together. Here's a line weight by image. So I take the image and I take the turtle and I get a result like that. Uh, now what has happened here is that the, if I make this bigger, I think that'll make it more obvious. There it is. So there's my spiral and you can see where it meets the picture, the spiral, the lines have been made thicker because of the intensity of the image. Now I can crop that back to the paper or I could resize it to fit on the paper. These are the nodes that can be added. But so, so that's, that's one possible example. Um, let's try something else here. Let's try a gradient not a gradient noise, a path image mask. Okay, so here's my image. Oh, and my frame rate is dropping. I'm not using hardware accelerated graphics at this time in this project. I have done them before, but it hasn't happened yet in here because I've had bigger fish to fry. Um, connect that into here. And now we've, so, now we got something new. So now what this means is that you can, of course, you can swap things around, you can play with it, you can get creative, uh, you can harmlessly try things and, and share them with others. Of course, you can save out your graph, uh, load in someone else's graph, you can merge graphs together, do other weird things like that to it. I mean, now that uh, I've got this here, maybe I, excuse me, Maybe now is the time to uh, align weight by image. And we'll put this over here. So it's something. I mean, they're all above a certain intensity, right? So there's not a lot of control there. Um, but... But uh, I don't know what's going to happen. It just it gets weird. Uh, uh, how about the, another mm. great one that I like is path uh, pattern on path. So here is a path from this turtle. And it shows nothing yet because I haven't put the pattern in that's going to appear on here. I'm going to add a an n-gon. And these are little squares at the moment. Uh, oh, because I've only got 10 on there. There's diamonds. It actually wrote supposed to rotate them based on the direction of the line, but uh, I'm not going to worry about why that's not happening. You know, it's early days. It's it's work in progress. Um, it's a coding adventure. <sighs> uh, fun stuff to be done with this. Um, cool. So so this is. This is where I'm going with this. And I want to use the same program for the other robot stuff that I do. I want to be able to connect, uh, to describe a motor and then connect the motor properties 
to get with, with the arm properties to make the robot arm understand itself better with you could build more types of robots and just again lego them together without having to write any any ugly looking code uh that's the dream at least um if i can get philosophical for a second we keep making up new computer languages but we're still all dealing with the same problems it suggests to me that new languages aren't going to fix anything they're not the 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 language itself might might not be the problem or maybe uh, it's like i work in java because the interface of with my ide is better than with any other development tool i've used the way i can pause the program make an edit and keep running the program without stopping i can't do that in c and i can't do that in c plus plus so they're right out right they immediately they lose because it can't do it can't iterate as fast as that and here i can iterate incredibly fast because i just draw the little connections and boop new things happen so that fat going faster hopefully gets me further lets me fix things quicker is more productive um it's all an experiment. It's just a, a hypothesis. Uh, I'm, I, I'm looking to talk to people who, who can either completely disprove it so that I can move on to something else or who are, think I might have something and want to contribute. So uh, I'd love to see you in my Discord. Uh, make some new nodes. I'll show you how. Um, put it all together. Let's make some funky art. Let's make the world a more beautiful and interesting place. Um, I really, really, really hope that this time my recording is correct because the last time I hit start virtual camera in OBS instead of record and I lost the whole thing. Um, yes, that's that. I guess I get before I go, I'm just going to show you one more little item. Uh, it is the it is a few of the images from that I've made recently, a little image gallery. Um, it helps if I can find the folder. Incidentally, within, to, cause, yes, so incidentally, uh, I, don't, I don't need you to donate to my Patreon. I just, all I ask you to do is to tell your friends who are into this kind of thing. Um, I would, I'm just trying to meet the same kind of people. Uh, which way am I going here? I got some junk in here. Uh, let's try this. Um, cleaning up this interface. Let's try it. Here we go. Here we go. Right. So here I use the N-Gon again on a path. Here I'm using a gradient noise, right? I've got a couple different kinds. I got Perlin, I got Simplex, I got uh, Cellular. And I'm mash it, mashing them together to make some cool effects in there. Here's um, a flow field based on the gradient noise. I've been having a lot of fun with that particular gradient noise. Um, here is, uh, I think this is Bohemian Rhapsody, the entire song in a spiral. Um, um, right? Uh, just how far do you want to go with it? Um, this is a D20 dice, right? Um, and I used the a truchet tiles to make the pattern and then made the lines thicker where it matches over the, the dice image. And I just having a great time with it. So yeah, if, if, if this is your jam, I would love to chat with you. Uh, I've run out of words. I will see you next time with an update on this or one of the other projects that I build. Cool. Bye-bye.